In chapter 10, our final chapter, I will show you just a few what I might call advanced techniques that are used in shell scripting. They tend not to fall into any other categories, so I've just bundled them together and put them into one chapter here. Let's have a look at them one by one. The first is what I might call debugging. All the programmers that are listening to this will probably be aware of the meaning of the word debugging. For the rest of you, it simply means fixing up unexpected errors in your program, i.e. bugs. So, sometimes your script will not work properly. Now, when that happens, it is sometimes obvious why it's misbehaving. It might be doing something very obvious and you go, oh yes, yes, that's such and such, I know how to fix that. But then sometimes it's not obvious. And it's at that point that you need to invoke the shell's special built-in debugging facility. It's very simple. There's not a whole lot to it, but it does usually help you fix the problem. It involves, involves script with the minus X option. The minus X option is actually an option to the shell. So you would have to run your shell script like uh, SH minus X and then the name of the script, as you can see on the screen. Now what that does is just before each command is about to be run, the shell echoes out to the screen exactly what it's about to run. And the important point about that is that all special characters such as wildcards, variable substitutions and so on have already been substituted or processed by the shell. So you'll be able to see what variables are actually set to and what wildcards actually expand to and so on. So the simplest thing to do is to probably have a look at this. Here's our contact script that we actually completed at the end of chapter 9 and I've introduced a little bug into it and I'm not going to tell you where the bug is, I'm just going to run the script and see what happens. So we'll run it now and the file is test.dat and it's in the create record section so let's have a look at that, I'll just enter some, some rubbish. Are these details correct? Yes. Okay, so we've got an error message dot slash contacts, file name, colon, ambiguous redirect. Okay, now, what does that mean? It's a bit difficult to tell. Now, we could look at the code, so let's do that. So I'll quit out of this, and quit, yes, and we'll go down to the actual code where that is created, which I believe is somewhere around here and there it is, that's the line where it's coming out I know that because I just put it there now even knowing that much is probably more than we would know some of the time but I do happen to know that that's the line where the mistake is but I can't see the obvious mistake so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the script again and this time I'm going to use the minus X option now it is going to make the output look very very messy because interspersed with all the output that we want to see will be all the debug output which is every command getting executed but that's what we do when we debug so let's have a look so it's sh minus x and then this script and then the parameters to this script which is test.dat now you can see that all the lines that begin with a plus are what the shell is about to do so for example uh, one of those echoes, echo backslash t one colon create records so that's echoing a tab character followed by a one and then create records and then you can see that the very next line is what actually happens when you run that particular statement so it's just a bunch of echoing at the moment so let's actually choose one of those we'll choose uh, number one because that's where the problem lies and notice that the very last thing that it's just done is a plus read name so it, that's the very last statement that got executed so it's now waiting for us to type something so I'll just do all the typing that I did before and we scroll through each one of those one by one okay so are all these details correct and I answer yes because I want the bug to occur and now somewhere in there is the error so let's have a look at it we've got the return 0, then we've got the echo, all that nonsense that I typed in and then we've got the error message now that echo statement actually looks ok but you will recall, and I'll just quit out of this that there's supposed to be a greater than greater than file name on the end 
and that's supposed to come up on the debug screen which tends to indicate to me that there's some sort of problem with the actual file name variable itself so what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of test information in here so I've just added I want to see what the value of file name is at that point because there might be some problem there and I'll run all that again and we choose option 1 enter some details and the answer to this question is yes now notice that right here right here is that echo of the file name but the actual file name has been uh, substituted the variable has been substituted and we don't see anything at all so somehow that variable is not set to anything which is a pretty good reason why we wouldn't be able to uh, echo this output into that file name if the file name was actually blank so here we are back in the code so that echo statement has served its purpose so what I would probably do at this point is scroll down to the point where I believe that I've actually set the variable called file name and find why it's not being set so I scroll down and down and down and here we are so that's the point where I'm setting the variable or where I believe I'm setting the variable and here is the problem the, file, the variable is actually called fname not file name so I've made a little mistake with my naming of my variable so I can go back to where I was and change that to just fname by itself and well that's going to fix the problem I know it is because I put the bug in there in the first place so you just have to take my word for it the program has now been fixed but the point is it was made easier for us to find the bug in the first place by using the sh-x we probably could have found it anyway if we would spent a bit more time but the sh-x op option certainly does help I'll show you the most common sort of error that you typically stumble across and where sh-x will help you here's a simple script we've probably seen this sort of code a hundred times please enter your username read it then test to see if that's equal to root and then if it is echo out you're the super user otherwise you're just a regular user okay so let's run this script now and please enter your username now I don't enter a username I just press enter and I get sample bracket colon equals bracket unary opera ex expected and what does that mean who knows maybe if I'm not new to shell programming I'd go well that's a weird kind of error so instead I would do this I would do sh minus x percent please enter your username and again I press enter and the line where I actually do the testing to see if it equals root I've, that begins with a plus as you can see we've got plus then the square brackets and then equals root which immediately makes me think hang on there's supposed to be something on the left hand side of the equal sign so I go back into the program and think hmm, yes well there is something on the left hand side of the equal sign how come that didn't get displayed and the reason is because we just press enter we didn't set name to anything so what's the solution well you might recall that the way to actually make there be something there even if name is empty is to do that and I'll run it again and please enter your username press enter and this time you can see that just there there's actually this time there is something on the left hand side of the equal sign it's the empty string but there is something and so the test program does not have a problem with that and we don't have any more problems with the shell script so we could just run it in the normal way this time and please enter your username and you are a regular user now we don't get any error messages and everything looks fine okay so that should give you an example of how you can use sh-x for your debugging needs this module describes a simple shortcut that you can use for setting default values for variables now you often find yourself writing code that looks like the following test to see if a variable is set in this case test to see if var1 is set or in this case test to see if it's not set and if it's not set then set it to its default value we frequently need to do that now there is actually a shortcut for all of those four lines and it is just the following the syntax is a little uh, confusing so bear with me we've essentially got our dollar sign followed by some information enclosed in curly brackets in braces 
and it's almost like inside the curly brackets we're just saying var1 equals whatever its default value is but it's not exactly that because we've put a colon there as well it's var1 colon equals its default value so if you can get your head around that and remember it it's actually a very useful thing rather than typing the above lines there's only one little problem with that and that is if you just type that line in on the command line by itself it will in fact set var1 to be in this case some default value but then the shell will actually try and run that as a command which is not what you want so instead what you typically do is you put a colon which is a command that does absolutely nothing and then you specify all of the above as the first parameter to the colon in other words you're specifying it as the first parameter to a program that does absolutely nothing so the program the command line will do nothing but the variable will still get set to its default value alternatively you could say simply assign that to a second variable which would cause var1 and var2 to both be equal to the same thing so let's have a look at that now in a script here is a little test of our script now I'll run this and see what we get now we get an error message saying hello command not found and var1 is set to hello so var1 actually does successfully get set to hello but as you can see uh, the very first line there is treated as a command line in its own right in other words the variable is substituted and it evaluates to hello so hello is tried to be evaluated as a command line we don't want that so we in insert the uh, the colon like that and we try it again and this time we don't get the error message but var1 is still set to hello so what happens if var1 is already set to something okay so I've just inserted a line that says var1 equals initial value so theoretically this line here should do now absolutely nothing because it won't set var1 because var1's already been set so let's test that and var1 is set to initial value so the second line the one that the cursor is currently highlighting is in this case a line that does absolutely nothing at all because var1 has already got a value when it gets to that point so there's a nice little trick that you can use it's a handy default setting and a useful shortcut for shell scripts.